room acoustics, and stereo. Well, this question comes from Carlos in Milwaukee, Wisconsin. And Carlos writes to me and he says, Paul, I usually listen to music with volumes around 70 dB, which is pr pretty, pretty quiet, and rarely higher than 80 dB. In which volume dB should I worry about room acoustics? Recently, I was told that I should spend five grand to fix my room acoustics due to its dimensions. If I had five grand to spare, I think I'd buy a Stellar Phono Pre and a Stellar DAC. Yes! <laughs> and an Ortofon moving coil cartridge instead. And I think you'd be smart to do that. Um, is the room influence a function of the volume level I listen to? Thank you, Carlos. Well, oh boy, that's a, mm, that's a, that's a tough one. E yes, it, it is, but man, who told you to go spend $5,000 on your room? We're going to back up here for just a second. I want to talk about room acoustics for a minute in, in more in general terms. Uh, first off, Carlos, I think whoever told you that, I'd, I'd, I'd run as quick as I could because I don't know who told you that, but either your room is um, just a real shit storm <laughs> or you're getting, some, you're getting something. I don't know. I, and, and it ain't going to be nice. I, you know, I'm sitting here at, at our tech, Jeremy, and his, he, he fixes a lot of our stuff. Look at this. I don't know how many of you have ever seen this, but this is, this is a real beauty here. This is one of our older power plants. I think it's a 600. And see the, the wavy lines? I can hear it. You can hear it on the, the heat sinks. So this swoopy heat sink, that, that was really tough. We, we do it in sections and then and we had to, you know, you have to, to make, to make a heat sink, you have to design it, then you have to go out and get an extrusion die built and it's really expensive. And then you have to push these long um, uh, uh, strips of aluminum and then cut them and machine them. It's really hard. But this whole thing was designed as the PS logo. If you look at our PS logo, it's kind of a sine wave swoosh. And this whole chassis was really cool back then. I mean, it's a little over the top today. M our friend Alex Rasmussen from Neo Fay designed this chassis. And I, I always loved it. It had a soft spot in my heart for that. It's, that. That was always a very nice industrial design. And I love industrial design. All right. So to answer specifically, in a way, I mean, it, 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 let's, let's take extremes. So it, if you play the system really softly, your room isn't going to interact a whole lot. And if you play it really loudly, it's going to interact even more. Th that is a fact. That said, rooms are very important. I would give the room probably third place importance, speakers number one, electronics number two, and room number three. It's very important. If you take your stereo system and you play it outside, you're not going to like the way it sounds. If you play it inside of your room and your room is really crappy, well, the same thing is going to apply. So we need to take care of our rooms. But I don't think I would ever recommend spending five G's I, and of course, I don't know what your room looks like, but there are a few rooms that would require that much in treatment to get the sound right. Typically, you can get away by placement. Um, you don't want to have too many bare walls. You want to have some kind of diffusion. Uh, I'm a fan of diffusion rather than absorption. But the worst thing that rooms do, of course, and the hardest to control is bass. So we, we have these things called standing waves where the, the, the sound builds up and then it comes in, in these waves of, of peaks and valleys. And if you're playing bass notes, you can walk around your room and listen, and as if it's, if you have just a boom, 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 something steady that you can play over and over, or even a tone, a tone is best. And th there's plenty of setup discs out there with tones on it. So let's just call it a tone, is maybe it's 60 hertz you're playing. 
walk around your room and as you do that you'll hear the tone the 60 hertz tone getting louder and softer in some areas of the room you might not even hear it and other areas it's really loud well that's because you're going into these peaks and valleys of standing waves that are bunched up at specific frequencies. And that's usually what most rooms do pretty poorly. And to get rid of that, that's really hard. And it, it, we could talk about that a little later because we're going to have some work done in our room because it's critical in our room that we're designing speakers in to get rid of some of the base um, uh, humps that we have. We, there's not much you can do about the dips, but you can tame down the bumps, but it can take a lot. The, mu the main thing that rooms do that we can control can, is, is for imaging and, you know, brightness, echo. We, if you do a slap echo, you don't want it to go, you, you don't want to hear this echoey thing. It's like, and you can do it right now. You heard just even on my microphone what this room's actually pretty good. That, I mean, we just have stuff in it, right? And that's typically what people do. Rooms have couches and, and uh, oh, dressers, chairs. All those things break up the sound and make the room a lot more comfortable to listen in, a lot better to listen in. So, yeah, there's tons you can do. I don't think I would be spending that kind of money on it. So. Um, we can look at your room if you want to email me. Um, I, I'm not a room expert, but I can tell you there are uh, plenty of ways through uh, wall panels, diffusion, but mostly what you want to do is just get some furniture in there and do some rearranging and, and you can do really well. So good luck with that. Uh, again, email me if you have any specifics and, and I'll be happy to help. Okay, <laughs> take it easy. Talk to you tomorrow.